Hello, uh, welcome you all for the next class on this easy cockpits. We have been going through several uh, uh, classes and I am sure you are able to understand and uh, benefit from these classes uh, one by one. Now, this is yet another important uh, uh, lesson. All these days we have been uh, generally uh, following what is uh, what are the different uh, menu and uh, different explanation of the menu items which are available on the MC, uh, uh, MCDU. Uh, uh, this I am going to take you to the PDU, prim uh, primary fl uh, flight data display unit. Uh, this is a very important uh, window which we are going to learn. Uh, that is the window is called the engine trim brake uh, window. We are going to learn about this engine trim brake and its displays and uh, uh, what are the uh, information which it provides in detail. Okay, let me take you to the cockpit uh, straight away and uh, I have shown here how the uh, captain side, the left hand side uh, PDU uh, looks and uh, as we have been seeing the whole, uh, the, uh, the entire scope can be divided in four different uh, windows and the right bottom window is what uh, we, are, we are going to learn about it and uh, this engine trim brake is presented in this right bottom uh, one third uh, window. Uh, so uh, that's what we are going to learn. Okay, uh, here uh, I, I try to highlight uh, the left hand side uh, uh, provisions, the ADI, HSI and the window configuration and as to where the drop down menu is uh, going to appear. So uh, this is just to bring you back in, into uh, the uh, cursor system and the drop down menu system. No? Yeah, no? Mm. Okay, uh, you, uh, uh, you take the cursor to the particular window and uh, there is a drop down menu which is uh, uh, presented to you. There are four options in the drop down menu. That is the first is the engine trim brake, the radios, the sensors and the traffic. These are the four options which we are going to see in detail one by one. Okay, the first uh, uh, menu selection is the engine trim brake uh, selection and this is what we are going to uh, be presented with, the captain is going to be presented with. That is the fuel parameters are given, uh, the oil parameters in terms of oil pressure and the temperature is being shown. Uh, down below uh, is uh, the fuel used and the fuel quantity in terms of pounds is uh, shown. Now fuel used is uh, is the one figure which is computed after the engine starts and uh, as the engine uh, fuel is consumed uh, from uh, the, so that's what is the fuel used figure is is computed from the actual fuel flow and fuel quantity figure shown is uh, shown depending on the measurement of the fuel quantity. So, uh, we are able to understand if there are going to be any discrepancy in the fuel quantity measured in, 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 the, in the display. Down below is the engine uh, uh, correction, control trim, trim, trimmers uh, dis display, position displays. You can see there is a position display for the aileron trimmer, uh, the rudder trimmer and the uh, uh, scab trimmer. Now these are very important particularly when there are failure cases such as engine failure 
to get an approximate idea of, as to where your rudder trim position and aileron trim positions are located. And the lowermost line is of course the APU status. APU status uh, in this figure it, it shows that the door is open and the APU is running at 100% and its EGT is 785. And of course when, when it is not running the, uh, there is no display and it goes black. Uh. First uh, uh, drop down menu which we a uh, second drop down menu which we are going to see is the radios and uh, in uh, in that the horizontal options that are available are VHF, NAV ADF, uh, ATC TCAS, HF and SAT. Uh, so uh, first uh, we are going to see the VHF part of it. There are three VHF sets fitted in the aircraft and uh, as you can see there are two sections in each window the pilot has to highlight the bottom portion of the uh, window select the frequency and uh, uh, transfer it so that it gets tuned in, into that particular frequency so obviously here it means that the left side pilot can highlight vhf2 and 3 and select a frequency for uh, vhf2 and 3 as well similarly anyone can select a frequency for any any of the VHF sets that's what I want you to notice now uh, the squelch option is I don't have to uh, explain in great detail so squelch on and off is another selection and the VHF spacing selection nowadays we know that uh, uh, for want of uh, different channels uh, the number of channels the spacing is uh, down to 25 kilohertz and then uh, so there is a provision to select that particular thing, uh, particular uh, selection, 25 kilohertz uh, spacing. Notice that there is a mode selector in uh, VHF3, the, there is a voice and there is a data mode uh, for data exchange through uh, uh, VHF or uh, VHF trans uh, transmitters. So uh, uh, that's what is the uh, VHF menu. Uh, is all about. Let us uh, go through the NAV ADF uh, horizontal menu. Of course, there is a selection uh, where the pilot can make the frequency uh, selection and then change it and tune it. The NAV 1 and NAV 2. And th there is one DME hold. Suppose uh, you have left a VOR and the, for some ATC requirements you need to keep the DME on for some more time uh, so uh, uh, he has asked you to report say some dme out so you want to keep it tuned but you want to tune the uh, vhf it itself to another frequency that dme hold is there and when you do a hold that the frequency to which it has been tuned is shown right below there and uh, there is a provision to select auto tuning of this NAVs. Once the pilot selects auto, then the uh, the, uh, the frequencies will be automatically it will be tuned to the frequencies which are as required for the entire route flying. You, the pilot simply doesn't have to uh, do uh, do any manual tuning. So it keeps as he keeps going on a long flight, it will select the best and the most appropriate VOR and keep tuning and keep going. And of course the marker uh, high low is the sensitivity which is for uh, ILS uh, selections. And of course and uh, there is a ADF tune tuner uh, uh, which are both ADF1 and ADF2 uh, can be tuned and uh, there are different modes, uh, uh, CW and voice uh, mode as you all know. Okay, next to horizontal menu is ATC TCAS and uh, I will not go into the great detail. Uh, all uh, provisions are uh, very well uh, very well known and you all understand all this. It is a very simple uh, uh, selection mode uh, and I just want to highlight that the, the modes uh, above, below and above and below 
and normal modes are also selectable and the above uh, mode and up to 7000 above and 3000 below and that's you are going to see it in uh, in that particular um, uh, lesson but these are the provisions which are available and there is a tara uh, mode selector for tara or only uh, traffic advisory is also available selection is a uh, hf selection and uh, i'm not going to go into the great detail because i'm going to cover all the provisions when we uh, talk about uh, hf in our communications lesson but uh, i just you can just have a look at this and uh, uh, know that hf uh, is tuned from this particular panel Okay, the last uh, one uh, that is the sat, uh, satellite communication option, uh, there is a large variation uh, and it entirely depends on the kind of equipment fitted in the aircraft. So, for this class, I have left out any explanation for satellite communication. Let us move on. The third drop down uh, menu selection that is possible is the sensors and out of the sensors, there are two um, horizontal menus which are possible that is the navigation and uh, weather uh, lightning strike and terrain awareness and warning systems these are the two sub menus which are uh, possible now here uh, the navigation window has been highlighted and uh, here there is a further drop down uh, menu that is possible that the pilot can select okay uh, uh, we are now on the navigation horizontal menu and within the window there is a drop down selection which is possible as you can all uh, see uh, what are the different options uh, performance summary the present page is in some summary that's what it shows and thereafter of course for gps irs nav fms and sensor select basically what uh, you you can monitor is the performance of each nav uh, aid that means uh, uh, global positioning uh, gps or irs vis-a-vis uh, -vis the calculated position uh, as to how it is performing that's what uh, we can see in in this drop down and we can select that part, those particular uh, uh, navigation aids Okay, for example, in this the pilot has uh, selected FMS 1 as the selection and of course in the drop down menu FMS 1, 2, 3 uh, is, uh, is all uh, possible for him to monitor and in this uh, display what is shown is the calculated uh, nav accuracy by the FMS 1 is 0.25 uh, nautical miles. Uh, as against required RNP, uh, required navigation performance of 0.55 uh, nautical miles. That's what this position uh, uh, performance uh, page of uh, FMS 1 is showing. Okay, here we are on to uh, GPS 1 page and, uh, and of course it gives one whole lot of information including the position in terms of coordinates and number of uh, satellites tracked and uh, as to what's the position difference from FMS1 and GPS calculated altitude also it gives and of course the current time etc it gives. So uh, the, there are one whole lot of information which it gives and uh, if one were to suspect the integrity of any of the GPS then we can go through this and uh, 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 try to find out here uh, the pilot has selected the rain prediction uh, page that is on the right side of the gps on page and here he has put a waypoint kilo golf julia tango probably uh, uh, that's that's uh, yeah that's his destination he wanted to find out what will be the um, uh, uh, signal uh, status as, as he reaches 
So his ETA is 1820. So this will give 15 minutes before uh, 1805 to 1835. That's what this uh, this uh, page is going to show. Here, the pilot has selected the IRS uh, drop-down menu and within that, um, IRS 1. As I told you, he can monitor all the all the uh, inertial reference systems, IRS 1, 2 and 3 by selecting any of that. Let's go ahead and see what all information uh, he, he can uh, uh, see and understand. Okay, the pilot has selected IRS 1 as the as the option and uh, see he can set magnetic heading sometimes when the, there is an issue with IRS uh, magnetic uh, uh, which we are going to see in the uh, nav uh, module. Uh, he can set the magnetic heading uh, manually and of course the position calculated is shown and the accuracy uh, how far is it away from FMS 1 uh, is also being shown and the ground speed is shown and last but not least the most important the wind speed the digital readout of wind speed is shown in this page in the entire aircraft this is the only page in which you will be able to give a, a digital readout of the uh, existing winds when the air traffic control sometimes he may ask you the spot winds. So at that time, if you want to uh, pass on the accurate uh, spot winds, then you have to come here and select the IRS as your selection and then read out the winds. Okay, this in this page, in this selection nav, uh, nav 1, one can uh, uh, estimate and one can understand the accuracy of each navigation system. As you can see, there are three VORs which are shown here and of course all need not uh, show uh, the figure and it is able to give a, a fair accuracy check and uh, and also if you notice there is another selection uh, NOTAM in which you can delete a particular uh, NOTAMs. Uh, if you can recall, we had earlier uh, um, uh, covered this that in, in elsewhere we will be able to selectively delete the NOTAMs and this is where it is. Okay, this is a page for uh, FMS uh, monitoring and selection. As you can see, all three FMS 1, 2, 3 is uh, visible in this page and uh, there is a, uh, you can either make it synchronous with other FMS or work in uh, independently if you do uh, suspect or if there is a need that you want to uh, it to work in an independent mode. So here all three FMS are in synchronous mode. That's what it looks like. Okay, as you can see, uh, there is a selection to uh, see if there are any issues with any of the SMSs. So that means the button called uh, problems is uh, shown there. So if you place the cursor there and press it, then you will get uh, another uh, window as shown here. You will be able to understand what are if there are any major issues with any of the FMSs. Here the pilot has selected summary as the option and as you can see all the nav aids and the calculated position is shown in the center and all other nav aids are shown um, uh, and with their accuracies. Here F FMS 1 position is shown in the center and within 0 0.01 mile accuracy is shown this is a GPS 1 and GPS 2 position and of course the other uh, calculated positions of FMS 2, FMS 3, inertial 1, inertial 2, nav 1, nav 2 are all shown a little bit outside and uh, the pilot can select in the select uh, boxes 
if he doesn't want to clutter up the uh, screen, he can uh, select and analyze the uh, respective navigation aids as he f feels like. This horizontal menu is to monitor whether uh, lightning strike uh, status and terrain awareness warning system. Uh, all, all these three can be monitored in this year. So, and of course, there is a mode uh, selection for the weather radar. Uh, you can select in weather mode and uh, map mapping mode. So, we have weather uh, and LSS. Most of the pro these provisions will be covered in detail. Like here, what is shown is uh, a react and turbulence and target alert and. Uh, antenna stabilization are the sub modes which are uh, shown and uh, one can uh, select deselect several provisions the details of these will be covered in the weather radar classes so i will not go into the uh, details now but if you uh, go through the bottommost section terrain awareness there is a flap override the glide slope inhibit and terrain inhibit and steep approach now uh, this is suppose let's say you you have to make an approach without the flaps and you don't want the gps ws warning to be alerted there. so you could select this flap override and then silence any uh, gps alert and similarly glide slope inhibit suppose you are carrying a visual circuit and landing in a place with ils you don't want uh, at every approach uh, it will give you below glide slope warning so you could select and deselect and of course terrain inhibit and a steep approach there are some uh, airports in the world which require steep approach and when you do that the gpws is going to give an alert and you don't want that to happen so uh, uh, you can either select and deselect that as well that's what uh, this uh, sub mode uh, will uh, will facilitate uh, the pilot it is very important to remember that this flap override GS inhibit is all available here uh, because at, at that moment uh, many times we won't know and we are searching for from where to cancel this particular um, option uh, because we have forgotten to cancel this particular option in, in when we before we commence the approach. The last but not the least is the traffic uh, traffic uh, option and um, this is very self-explanatory and it is going to be covered in detail in the TCAS uh, chapter but as you can see there are uh, some this is particularly it is showing the test pattern but it is showing all the traffic advisory resolution advisory and uh, all the pictures that are uh, uh, possible and uh, on a normal flight this window will pop up if there is any uh, uh, RA or of course uh, TA definitely it will pop out RA definitely it will pop out and uh, pilot if he wants also he can uh, see the page and uh, monitor uh, these displays are also available in the INA map so uh, as a routine you don't have to but if you are concentrating only on the primary flight display that is the PFD uh, then you need to have this in the traffic uh, page and of course in some failure cases maybe you will need this particular provision that's why it has been given here as well. Okay I hope you found this lesson uh, interesting and uh, uh, please keep following my lessons on my YouTube channel and uh, on our website and uh, eventually we are going to make it uh, much more professionally presented uh, that's uh, that's what is our aim and assurance uh, that's that sh uh, should happen over a period of time uh, when we are able to generate some kinds of uh, some kinds of funds anyway so uh, please feel free to offer your comments and critical comments uh, uh, to improve the um, uh, quality of, of our uh, lectures uh, uh, especially in terms of timings in terms of uh, depth which is covered 
please feel uh, please feel uh, free to offer your comment uh, comments uh, thank you very much for uh, listen to having listened to this lesson and let's meet each other for more and more lessons to come